Okay, uh, it looks like we are live, so welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be actually doing something a little different. I'm going to be building a fourth interpreter in Go. Um, yeah, so I'll put the source code in the chat. Alright, so, if you're not familiar with fourth, which you probably are because of porth, um, but basically, it is, um, it's a stack-based programming language. So, here is sort of how it works. Uh, you can look here, um, and if you type a value, right, so one for example, and it puts one on the stack, all right? And you can put two, and it'll put two on the stack. You can do three, and you can put three on the stack. And then you can perform addition, and it will take the top two elements of the stack and add them together. So you can see there's five there there. And you can actually output that if you use a dot. So you can do something like uh, five, 10 plus. So that will uh, put five on the stack, 10 on the stack, add them together, then put a dot, and it will print it out. So if you do that, 15. Uh, that's pretty much how it works. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to actually build an interpreter for this. Um, basically for two reasons. Uh, one, so I can learn more about Go. Uh, and then also, so I can learn more about Forth. Because uh, it's really quite an interesting language. So, uh, let's just get started. So, uh, package name. And then import. And we'll import format for now. Uh, and that's all we should need. And then, let's do, uh, whoops, it's just funk name. There we go. And then I will just print out a hello world. Don't need the new line. And then uh, let's see if it actually works. Main.co, there we go. Hello world. Um, so uh, we're going to need to read from a file. So I think we can do that with um we'll read a byte, so it's gonna be bytes. And then an error, and then I think we can do mm, it's os dot read file and then the file name. So test.org. Um we do need to import os for that. And we need to make the actual test.forth file. Uh, which I don't know if fourth is necessarily the right um, right file extension, but that's what I'm going to use. So, test.fourth. Um, Alright, 510 plus. Uh, so that is what I'm going to try to... Um, we basically need to lex it and then interpret it. Um, yeah, so because of the nature of it, it's not going to be too extremely difficult to actually... Like, we don't need to do very much um, in terms of parsing. Um, because of how it works. And then all the errors can basically be reported at runtime. Uh, yes, okay. Give me a moment. Alright, uh, okay. So, hmm, that's not right still. I was trying to do add stuff, and I turned that off, so. Hmm, give me a second, hang on. Save change. Okay. And there we go. I think I turned it off now. Uh, yeah, I was trying to run an ad. So that should be fixed now. Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Basically, uh, that should read it two bytes. Um, and then I think we can output that if we do something like print um, string of bytes. Uh, so that will basically stringify it. And then if I run that and we do have some problems. Uh, so this needs to actually be like that because we're defining a new one. Uh, and let's see. Okay, error declared and not used. So yeah, I need to actually check for the error. So if there is an error, then we can just do fatal error. There we go, something like that. Uh, and we need to import log, and now if I run that, there we go. That is the contents of the file. So, something I want to do is basically make um, contents, I suppose. And that will be, uh, let's see, string bytes. Um, but I actually want to do uh, strings dot fields of the bytes and that's going to turn them uh, into basically an array separated by spaces uh, so I do need to import strings for that I think I'll move that right there there we go and it did not work because uh, I did not print out contents actually so now if I print out the content uh, there we go now they are separated let me do print line actually they're separated um by spaces so we have that um, and now that's basically what we need. So we can do like content zero and there we go. We get the five and we can do uh, two and we get the plus. There we go. Perfect. Um, so that's pretty much what we need to do in terms of lexing because the way it works, except maybe once we get to like strings and stuff, it's going to be a bit more complicated than that. But for right now, that should be pretty much all we need. So I'm thinking, should we use perhaps, um, perhaps a, an enumerator? Uh, which is iota in in here. So I think we do something like this const, and then we want to define it. So 
this will basically be the types. Um, let me see actually how iotas work. Uh, because I don't remember exactly. Iota in Go. Yeah, I just looked it up. Uh, but I don't remember. So what is the definition? Um, yeah. So it's just like that. Uh, like I was thinking. So basically, this will be the different types of the token. Um, actually, do I want to do that? Mm, probably. Yeah. Okay. So we could have push. Uh, what, so if you encounter something that we're gonna push. So for example, bot. Uh, then it would be a type of push. So push, um, I'll call it type, equals iota. There we go. And then I think we can just define the rest here and we'll automatically iota them, essentially. Push type, and then let's see, add type. Uh, there we go. And those are the only types that we need right now. So basically we need to iterate over the content. So I think we can do that by doing something like for, um, let's see. So this is the value and the index um, in range range of contents uh, i think that's how you do that and then i will just print out the value for now uh that'll and i'll underscore that and let's see if that works all right zero one two um okay so that's not exactly what i wanted because mm -hmm. that is that the index uh and the value is the other way around yeah okay let me see uh mm -hmm. all right let's run that and there we go all right so now we have the contents, um, and basically we need to check what it is, and depending on that, we need to assign it a uh, thing. So let's actually make a structure here. So I think you do this like, um, let's see, token, um, and then struct, uh, just like that, and then we have to give it. Basically, it will need a mm, a value. So I think. The value not called char. I think the value can be a string. So val is string. Um, and it also needs a type, which will be an int. Uh, because these are ints essentially. Um, yeah. So I think we can do something like that. So then we can use a switch statement. I think here on the val. Uh, let's see. I don't like the way it's indented. Uh, but I think that is how you're supposed to do it. Okay, I guess like that sure sure uh okay so the case of let's see so we can do plus that's pretty easy to check so case plus then we'll basically let's create a token at the in on each thing so let's just make a token oh yes let me actually our token i can type right all right token token and then we'll do token dot um, token let's see token dot um, type equals add type um and then for now uh we can actually do default and then do token dot type equals push type and then token dot value or val let me do a value so there's not confusion with the with that uh value all right token dot value equals val essentially is what we have to do there um, yeah, and then we need to append that to some sort of list of tokens. So I think we can do mm, token tokens, something like that. And then at the end of each iteration, we do, uh, let's see, token equals token dot, or append equals append token, uh, and then token. tokens, 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 there we go, uh, like that, there we go. So that's about what we need to do. Um, this needs to be tokens, and this can be token. There we go. Uh, so if we do that, and then we print out the token token dot uh, type, for example. Run that. All right. So we do have some issues. Um, unexpected type. All right. So that is on seventeen. Let's see. Mm, okay. So it doesn't like that. All right. So I don't think it likes this type. So let me see if I can do something. Maybe like kind instead. Um, let's see, what is another type synonym? Type synonym. Let's see if there is something good. Uh huh. Brand. Um, breed. Ah, oh, should we call it breed? Uh, that could be interesting. Uh, category. I guess category is kind of group. Um, I think I'll be category. So yeah, this cat. Category. There we go. And then we have to change this up here and to category. Nope, that's the wrong one. And I change category. Uh, it's not perfect. I think type is better, but probably best to not do that anyway. Category, there we go. And now let's run that. 
an unexpected that. All right, so that is 29. All right, so it isn't like that. So how do you define an array of struts? Uh, let's see. Array of struct window. Let's see. Is there something good? Uh, ooh, you know what? I think I have to do something like that, actually. There we go. Uh, okay, so no, that doesn't work. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, all right, so we just need to do empty like that. Let's see, I run that. All right, perfect. So zero, zero, one. All right, so that means we had a push type, a push type, and an add type. So right now, I do want to actually, maybe a switch statement won't work exactly. Uh, let me see if there's like, is digit in go. Uh, something equivalent to that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, maybe, maybe this. Um, is digit. So that takes a room, which I think is essentially what we have there. Mm. All right, so we need to import Unicode. Unicode. And then, yeah, so we can't really use a switch statement for this. So let me get rid of that and just do if. If val equals that, uh, yeah, and this needs to be like that, uh, and actually, there we go, else if val, e or else if mm, e unicode dot is digit uh, val, so I don't know if this one will work, but we'll find out, I suppose. Okay, so, let's see, all right, 46. Uh, ooh, okay. Did I remove a closing closing one? Uh, let's see. Else if uh, equals zero or mm. okay. Let's see. All right. Non-declaration statement outside of body. So I don't know. Mm, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what the issue is. Uh, I need to actually uh, move that down there. Perfect. Okay. Now if I run that. Okay. Yeah, so let's get rid of that. Mm, okay, cannot use val. All right, so it doesn't like it. So mm, is there some way we can do it? not on a room or convert a character to a room mm. uh, bah, bah. let's see go convert character to room or maybe it's bite i think it's called bite if you win mm, yeah i think so bite and room all right maybe just go is digit on bite okay is number uh, okay, do we need to use is number actually? Let me try that. Uh, is number. Mm, okay, yes, yeah, so it still doesn't like that. So, um, mm, one. Okay. Hmm, I might need to just implement my own. So, mm, on, ooh, that might have been useful actually. On, Let's see. Yeah, all these take room, so mm, all right, let's go here. Um so I think it's actually a string, right? So that is why it doesn't work. So can I just do mm, that won't work because yeah, that's not what we want. Uh, it, can we convert a string to a room? We'll convert a string to a room. Let's see, probably won't work. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So mm. let me do go check if string is digit. Let's see. Um. Mm. Oh, okay, so we can actually, all right, that is interesting. So let me make like a separate function. Function uh, is digit, something like that. And then that is not the same name as the other one, so there won't be any confusion with that. 
and basically we just take a value which is a string and then uh let's see start on uh, toy v uh which is val uh yeah air equals yes yeah, so that's what we want to check then let's see so return one otherwise return zero okay i think that it will work mm -hmm. so let's call is digit or we need to actually import uh stir con like that um yeah something like that and then um, okay then we can um, yeah right here we can do is digit everything Oh yeah, so I need to actually set it so that it returns an int. There we go. Uh, Unicode imported but not used. We can get rid of that. Non-boolean condition. So yeah, maybe just uh, return true and return false. Uh, something like that. I'm used to uh, using ints for that. Okay, there we go. So zero zero one. So then we can actually add an else and say. Uh, let's do log that fatal. Mm, actually, can we do it like this? I don't know. Error. Uh, yeah, just something like that now. Um, okay, undefined log that fatal because that's capital F. And then, okay, so now if we add something else that is not expected in here, then it will say that. Uh, yeah, error. So I think that's pretty good. Okay, so yeah, we now are generating this properly. So now we have the tokens. So actually, let me make sure. So for a uh, range of tokens, so now we're iterating through all the tokens. Uh, I will just uh, token dot. Let's see, no, val val dot category. All right, perfect. So it is working. They're all being saved in there. Um. So now, now basically we need to iterate over the tokens and then do something based on the type of them. So I think we can do switch uh, val dot category so i think this will actually work uh this switch statement case of mm, so type push type uh and then case of add type all right so we actually need to define a stack so i think we can do that with a struct so type stack struct and it is going to be a stack of integers at least for now so i think we can do stack is int something like that i um, mean also we need the stack size int uh like that all right and then we'll actually make some functions for these so we'll do uh stack stack and then we have push push and this will take a value so value int um yeah and then we'll have another one that stack uh pop it will take a value in, but it will also return an int. Um, yeah, so basically, we can implement those. So we can use push, or we can actually use just a pen for that. So we can do uh, stack dot stack equals um, a pen stack dot stack value. And then also we need to do stack dot stack size plus plus. Uh, yeah, something like that. And then here we can do stack dot stack. Actually, uh, I think we're going to need a value here. So we'll do uh, result equals mm, stack dot stack and then stack dot stack size. And we need to actually do stack size minus minus first. Uh, and then we can just return result. Yeah, so we need to return it. Um, okay, something like that. And we'll make sure there's no, uh, no problems with this. Whoops, that is not what I wanted. Nope, exit out of there. Okay, uh, yeah, so now if I do go run, and not go, mm, format is imported, so I don't use that anywhere. Mm. Let me add, oh yeah, so this actually probably isn't good. So I will just do format.print test, and then same thing here. Let me just do the same thing. Uh, okay, undefined stack. So that is, uh, da da, mm, 26. All right. Uh, it doesn't like this. Yes, because this needs to go the other way around. Uh, stack, stack, something like that. There we go. And now that should work. Okay. 
So yeah, we print out those. So basically, yeah, now we have the stack. So we need to actually define one here. So I will define it right here. Uh, so just there, stack is a stack. Perfect. And then we can do stack dot push uh, val dot well, actually we need to do uh, let's see what is it circom dot se to int um of val dot val that there we go. And then here we actually need to pop off the top two elements of the stack and then push the push the value of them. So we can do a let's see um a equals uh pop let's see stack dot pop and then b equals stack dot pop and we can do stack dot dot push mm, actually this should be circom dot my toy there we go and i'll do the same thing here there we go it's gonna be a all right stack dot push a plus b something like that so let me run it mm, okay cannot use stack dot pop uh as string value Mm, oh yeah, because this is uh, mm, yeah, because this is already an int, so we don't need to actually convert. Uh, yeah, 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 I forgot. Because when we push it on, it's an int. So yeah, that is good, just like that. Perfect. All right, now not enough arguments to stack that pop. So pop doesn't actually take anything, so I think I defined it wrong. Yeah, so that doesn't take anything, so we don't need that. There we go. Now if I run that, uh, format imported but not used. So let me just actually at the end. Mm, yeah, so this is a little weird because of the switch statement. Oh yeah, format dot print line that, uh, just for that. Okay, two arguments to stack dot push. Ooh, okay. So mm, let me just do. Uh yeah, so we can just convert. So basically, converted maybe mm, value. Yeah, I'll do a value is. Uh, and also we need the error equals there we go, equals stir convert dot a toy. Mm, let me see. Give me a second. Okay. So basically value error equals that of val dot value. Then I can get rid of this and we do need to handle the error. So I'll do that in a second. Then we'll push value. We do if error does not equal nil, then log dot fatal error. There we go. And okay, so we got to the end. So let me actually make a function really quick for handling errors. So that can just go all the way up at the top after all the definitions and stuff. Um, yeah, right here. So basically, handle error, and this will just take an error. Uh, and then if error does not equal nil, then it will just be log dot fatal fatal error. Uh, perfect. So yeah, then we can just call that rather than doing this over here. Handle error, error. Which I don't know if this is necessarily the most idiomatic way of handling errors, but it does work, and that's what matters. So then let's do yeah. Uh, handle error, error. Okay. So let's run that now. All right. So we did get to the end. So now let me just print the top of the stack. So basically, uh, print stack dot top. Uh, and it should be, all right, so it's five. Uh, that's not what we want. So did I do something wrong? Let's see. Do, do, do. All right, what if I do that a couple of times? All right, um, mm, yeah, so actually that is a too many times. Uh, so that did not seem to work. So we have five. Um, bum, bum. Does it actually, ooh. All right, let me do that. Uh, five, and then 10, 15. Okay, so yeah. So the pop is not, um, so it should be, Removing the stack size and then ooh, okay, I know what the issue is. So when we do append, it doesn't actually consider the stack size. So yeah, I didn't even think of that. Uh I think we can just do this the C way. So equals yeah, so we can just basically do equals stack dot stack stack dot 
stack size plus plus. Uh, there you go. Something like that. Now if we run it. Um, Alright, so yeah, it doesn't like doing that in there. So stack dot stack size plus plus at the end. Okay, uh yeah, actually stack dot stack um stack dot stack size equals the value. That's what I want to do. Equals value. There we go. Something like that. Alright, and then now the index is out of range, so instead of this, we can just pop. Uh, stack dot pop. There we go. And now, all right, it did not work. So push did not work. Zero with length zero. All right, so it doesn't. Yeah. So I don't think we can use a pen. I don't think that actually works. So yeah. Or I think we have to use a pen rather. Equals a pen stack dot stack value. So I need to. Let me see. Let me just look. Uh, stack in go. Because uh, there's no built-in data structure for it. So let me give it a day. Um, because that basically reassigns it. So let's see. Yeah, I was looking at some of these. Mm. So yeah, I want to be able because when we append, it gets rid of that. So let me look in here. Uh, push. Yeah, that appends, and then pop. If that is zero, last item is that, and then items equals. All right, so we need to actually change it. So items is the same as. Uh, dot stack for us so mm, all right so let's see I think we can do uh, ba, ba, let's see so stack equals or stack dot stack equals stack dot stack and then uh, stack dot stack size uh, let's see yeah so minus one uh, actually, the minus one is already accounted for. So I think if we do that, then... All right, perfect. There we go. That is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, so... Yeah, that works. Um, So now we can pop it. And then if we try to pop it again, it will be out of bounds. Uh, perfect. And now we can actually change this and get uh, different values. So if we do 10 and 10, then it will be 20. All right, perfect. And yeah, we can basically do this indefinitely. So that is perfect. I don't like this. I want to... Uh, I want to do that. Um, yeah. All right. So now, now I want to be able to print it because uh, now we're just printing it. But I want to actually check. So let's make a print type. Print type uh, like that, and then we will print it out. So mm, yeah, basically print line. So instead of doing that, we'll do. We need to actually check up here. So yeah, I'll check here. Else if val equals dot like that then we are going to do token dot category category equals print type there we go and then here we need to add a case for print type so that can go at the end case print type then we want to actually pop it off from the stack because in fourth uh let's see we can look at this interpreter here if you uh let me see if i reload it actually then it'll be empty if you uh do five, then five is on the stack, and then you do dot, it will actually pop it off. So that is what we need. So basically, we can do a is stack dot pop, and then, mm, yeah, then we just basically want to format dot print line a. Uh, yeah, something like that, and I think that'll work. So token dot category undefined. All right, I think I spelled it wrong. Category, there we go. So that'll actually work. Uh, yeah, all right, 20. So then it outputs it. Uh, that is actually perfect. So I think I'm going to add. I think I'm going to add some checking now. So basically in here. Uh, if stack dot stack size is less than zero or let's see, mm, is not greater. Let's see, uh, blah, blah, less than zero. So it's not less than zero. It equals zero. If it equals zero, then we have a problem because that's before we subtract it. If it equals zero, then yeah, we can just do one dot data error. Uh, yeah, so error stack underflow, and then we don't really need anything for stack overflow. Uh, that's really the main problem that we would have. So I think that's good. Uh, so now if we add an extra dot here, it should say stack underflow. Uh, perfect stack underflow. Uh, so that is good. That's what I want. But 
if we do 10, let's see, 10, 10 plus, and then 5, 5 plus, and then dot, dot, it should print, print, uh, print out 10 and then 20. 10 and 20, perfect. That is superb. So, yeah, that is good. Uh, now I can add other operations, uh, and that should be pretty easy. So let's do minus, 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 minus. So, yeah, I can just add another type here. Cloud type. Yep, so add and subtract. Uh, and then we just basically need to check if it is sub, like that. Then we'll do token type category equals subtype. Perfect. And then we will add the case for subtype. It's sub, whoops, subtype. And then we'll do the same thing, but we'll do a, we'll stack that box. Uh, and actually, I need to see what order fourth does this in. So if I pull up the interpreter, does it subtract A from B or B from A? So I'll push 5, 10, and then minus. So it's negative 5. So it's the top, which would be A, minus, all right, so A minus B. So basically, stack dot push A minus B. All right, and then now you should have minus. So if I run that, I don't print it. If I run it now, 0, okay. And then if I change this one to be greater, then it should be negative. Uh, no, hang on, uh, 10 minus five. no, actually it is the other order, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I just completely, all right, so it takes the bottom, takes the bottom and subtracts that from the top, so it'd be five minus 10 in this case. Uh, okay, yeah, so I need to change the order basically, just B minus A, there we go, and now if I run it, negative five, okay, so that is good, so yeah, if I do five ten, it should be the same output, five ten. Then run this and negative five and that is perfect all right so that works now so yeah the rest are pretty self-explanatory so we can do multiplication and then division so let me add that mole type and div type see mole type and div type and then yep just add the same checks here so else if thou equals multiplication uh, and I need that space there. There we go. Uh, token dot category equals mole type, and then here, else if val equals division, then token dot category equals div type. Um, and I don't know if there's mod modulus in fourth. I will need to see. Uh, so let me give it a bit actually. Okay, so then yeah, we can add them. And it is rather similar to this, so if I do that, uh, so we have mole type and div type, mole and div, all right, and so this is divide multiplication, all right, so the, let me change this so it is the same, even though it doesn't matter, uh, yeah, let me try actually division, so if I print that out, and then I do 10, um, let's see, 10, 20, div, 0, okay, so, mm, all right, zero and two. Okay, well, let's try that out. So, uh, there we go, so 50. Oh yeah, because that is multiplication, so that works. Uh, now let's do divide, and then zero. So let's make sure that the same div is zero. Okay, perfect, so that is actually the right order. So yeah, now we have those operations. So let me see if there is, let me print all these out. Let's do 10, 20 mod, and all right, it doesn't know what mod is. So mod does not exist. Uh, let me actually see that. Uh, modulus in four. Oh. Uh, this is not fourth. So uh, let me see. I want to know if there is mod. Do, do, do. So it looks like, okay, that didn't work. Uh, okay. This is very confusing looking. I'm just going to say there isn't for now, and we can get into that later. So, uh, now we have, already, we can do quite a bit of stuff. So we can push that, and then we can add them. And we can push 10, and we can add that as well, and then we can print it out. Uh, yeah. There we go, 25. So we can do all that. But there are other operations in here. So if I open this up, um, let me see. Let me just go to where it is defined. So there is words, uh, which I will get to that. But... For right now, yeah, stack manipulation. So you can do and also swap. 
So drop is basically equivalent to pop. Um, simply drops the top element of the stack. Uh, yeah, so then it, uh, that will be pretty easy to implement. So we can just check. Uh, bah, bah. Yeah, so we can just check here. Else if val equals drop, then we can drop. Basically, token that category equals drop type. And I need to actually add that. <coughs> so we add it here, drop type. Uh, and then we'll just pop from the stack. Uh, right here. Uh, case drop type. Uh, stack dot pop. Uh, and there we go. So then if we do drop here, and don't add, then print it out. Um, there should be nothing. And it should actually, yeah, stack underflow. All right. And then if we push, and let's see, if we push five here, uh, then it should output 15. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So drop is working now. And so now dupe uh, takes the top element of the stack and duplicates. So if we do five dupe and then plus and print, then that should output 10. So uh, dupe is, should be pretty easy as well. So dupe and swap. So I'll kind of do them at the same time. Uh, dupe and swap. Okay. So we need to check if it is equal to dupe. Uh, val equals dupe. Mm, just like that. And then also else if val equals swap. Uh, whoops. Okay. So then we'll do token that category equals um uh dupe type there we go and then same thing but swap this time swap type okay mm -hmm. all right uh so we're gonna category all right so i think that should work and then here uh whoops and then do that all right so this will be dupe and then swap swap all right, there we go. All right, so what order does it do this in? I also could do 5, 10, dupe, and then that. All right, so I actually dupe. Actually, yeah, dupe makes a lot of sense. So we can just pop it off, and then, well, actually, we don't even need to push, pop it. We just need to um, push the top. So we do need to implement some sort of P. Uh, push stack dot P. So let's just do that really quick. So it's basically the same as pop, but it doesn't actually modify anything. Uh, so if I just yank this. And then we can do that uh, and make it peak. Uh, if it is, let's see, if it equals zero, we can do less than zero. Mm, less than zero and do that. Um, otherwise, otherwise we can, maybe if it equals zero x. Okay, otherwise we don't subtract the stack size and we just return um, the result, uh, which would be stack size stack, stack size minus one. Uh, so that's what we want to return then. Okay, stack that piece. So that should actually work, I think. Undefined push. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I need to do stack dot push. There we go. Uh, stack underflow. All right. So that seems to have not worked. So let me see something. So, uh, a. Equals stack dot e, and then stack dot push a. Let me try doing that. All right, so we still stack. Um, do do. So why is that? Push push push. Mm. Yeah, do that. There we go. Mm, okay, so we still stack underflow. Uh, stack underflow in p. Uh, so I can know where it fails. Let's see. So it's not in there. So it is in the pop. So yeah, it must be with the plus operation, right? Yeah. Let's see what that does. Uh, okay. So we still stack underflow. So uh, I think I didn't handle dupe properly. Uh, let's see. Dupe. Yeah. Okay. I actually did this the wrong way. I put it in the wrong place. So I'm gonna do that. All right. Now I can just go there. All right. There we go. And now five. Okay, and now I can put plus, and it should be perfect. Okay, yeah, so it's just, I put it in the wrong place. Uh, so for swap, uh, let me look at that. So if I do, if I pop all these off, uh, and then I do 10, 15, swap, then we get 15 and 10. Okay, so wait, yeah, I don't, I don't need to, yeah, it just pops it off and then pushes it on, on in the different order. So yeah, pop, 
and then basically we want to push b first uh stack dot push b and then stack dot push a something like that um i think maybe it is the other way actually ah uh, yeah i think it's like that so let's try that so let's do 10 and then swap and then uh let me not do that so just print it out so then five should be on top there we go all right perfect so now we have a couple of things here uh, a couple of useful operations so let's see what else we have so we have swap and then we have over uh, it takes the second element from the top of the stack and then duplicates it to the top okay so that basically mm, okay so we basically need to um yeah so just basically take stack size minus two uh yeah so let me just implement the logic for it and then i'll implement the actual lexing uh so this will be over type we don't want to pop anything off so we can just do a is stack dot stack stack dot stack size minus two uh, i think like that and then stack dot push a all right so if i do that and then i implement the actual over type so else if val equals over okay and then token dot category equals over type just like that um and then make this over right okay and now actually over um yeah so that should take five and put it on the top of the stack okay and then if i print them all out i should be able to print three times uh five ten five all right so that is perfect we have over implemented now um all right right takes the top three elements of the stack uh okay yeah so this basically mm, okay so it kind of pops them all off so they're all going to be a little different i suppose is that what i want to do mm, just pop them all off and then let me see i suppose so okay so let me add what type um and then here that and then do else if val equals rot uh token that category equals rot right okay okay and then we can do case case rot type and then a is stack dot rot b and c and then we want to push the other two we want to push the last one that we pop off uh push uh, yeah, we want to push C. Stack that push. Um, okay. Push C. So we'll put C on top. And then we want to push it in the correct order. So then B and A. No, that's not right. Uh, let me see. A and B. Let's see. Uh, let me see if that's right. So let me push uh, then 11. So let me do... Let me actually change that. 1, 2, and then 3. And then we'll do rock. And it should be... One on the top, then two, then three. So if I've done that. Uh, okay, so that didn't actually work. You put two on the top. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. So A, stack that pops, so that'd be three. Uh, so A actually would go on the bottom. Uh, yeah, but that's still not right. So then we have three, two, one. So A is three, B is two, and then C is one. So yeah, actually, I want to change that. So I want to push it. Uh, the last one that we push is going to be on the top, actually. So yeah. Uh, something like that. Let's see. One, and then three, and two. So that is perfect. That is what I want. So yeah, now we have right. Uh, yeah, so yeah, one, two, and three, right. And then two, three, and one. So that's what we have there. So that is good. All right. So yeah, here's the period that we implemented for printing. <clears throat> Output numbers as ASCII characters. Okay. So I think we can do that. Uh, yeah. So emit. Uh, it is go here. Emit type. And then we need to lex it as well. Else if val equals emit. Then we'll do token that category equals init type. All right, perfect. Uh, that should be good. And then, whoops, uh, case init type. 
Uh, so, yeah, we'll basically pop it on. Stack that pop. And then we want to do comment dot print line, but we want to print it as um as ASCII. So see uh print digit as ASCII and go. How do we go about doing that? Um boom. All right, uh let's see, is there a built-in way of doing that? Um, can we just do something like string? String of A. Alright, so let's do... Uh, let's do one that... So 48, and then a minute, and that should be 0. Uh, okay, so that is good. Uh, and let's see, I don't remember. I think A is like 63 or 64 or something like that. That's a question mark. Uh, okay, maybe it's higher than that. Let's try that. Uh, H, okay. Okay. So I think that works. So, uh, and then 10, yeah, 10 should be a new line. So then we get an extra new line. Uh, yeah, so if I do emit and then emit again, and actually I want to change the order of this. So let's do 10 first and then that. Then we get H a new line. Okay, perfect. Uh, that is good. So let me do, uh, let me actually just do dot print for these. And then, yeah, then it doesn't print a new line. Um, and I think it's a bit nicer. So we can do something like 10, 10, 10, dot, dot, and then emit, and that will print a new line. Next, we want to do, mm, let's see, how do we want to do? So emit, yeah, okay. If I run that, then, all right, yeah, so that is good. So if I do that, then, yeah, okay. So we have emit, and then carriage return. It simply outputs a new line. All right, so I guess that is, there is a built-in way of doing that. So, Mm, yeah, I can just do CR type. CR type. Uh, yeah, so that is a new line. So let me do, instead of this, I can do CR. Get rid of one of the things. And then that will be basically the same output. So, mm, yeah, we can just check. Let's see if now equals uh, CR. Then token.category equals CR type. And then we can add it here. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so basically, we just want to, well, we want to pop it off, right? Do we want to pop it off, actually? Uh, no, so we don't want to pop it. So we just want to print a line. I think we can do it like that. Okay, so if I run that, mm, okay, this needs to be changed, actually, to CR type. And then if I run that, okay, yeah, so it's the same output. Uh, works the same way. Uh, it just prints a new line, explicitly. Uh, perfect, okay, yeah. So, I can just do that a bunch of times and print a bunch of new lines. Uh, yeah, alright, so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, pen, pen, plus, dot. Um, oops. Okay. So, yeah, that is cool. So, I think I will actually push all this. Uh, implemented, minted, basic stack operations. So, I will push that to the repo. Uh, and it should be up here now. And then I will continue working on it. All right, perfect. Uh, yeah, so let's see. What else do we have here? So this, yeah, this is for strings. So I'm not going to get into strings yet. Uh, but that's how you would do that. So you do uh, special word for the word. Okay, uh, let's see. So I don't think you can do it just like this. Like, I don't think you can do hello world and then end it like that. Yeah, so it doesn't do that, but you can define a, an explicit word, and then do something like that, hello world, uh, and then you can print it out if you call say hello. So that is how you have to do that. Um, yeah, see so yeah, it, I'll put that. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, okay, the top of the stack, so that prints the, okay. Yeah, so loops, uh, I might get into loops. Let me just make sure I didn't skip anything important here. Uh, Kronborg 10 just followed. And you're my 100th follower, so that is very cool. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that is dot. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we got all of these operations. Uh, drop and dupe. Yeah. Uh, whoops. 
All right, so I'm not going to worry about defining words just yet. I may get into that, but first I want to make sure I have all the other base, basic stuff first. Uh, so we do have this. Oh, uh, yeah, reverse Polish notation. That is what we use. Nicely timed by me to hit number 100. Yes, indeed. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so that is how you calculate that. So there's no, like, brackets uh, for order of operations. In. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think we implemented all this stuff. So let me... I like the name Gorth. Uh, yes. Gorth. I thought it was kind of funny because it's go, but forth. Um, yeah. I thought it worked well. Uh, yeah. So, let's see. Um, so, yeah. Maybe I should get into loops now. Uh, I feel like that... So, this should be pretty easy, actually. Equal. So, yeah. Just a single equal sign. And that will push uh, whether it's equal or not. So if we do this, uh, then it will push negative one, um, negative one to the stack. Um, yeah. So if I print it out, then it would be negative one. Uh, but if they weren't equal, it would push zero. Uh, yeah. It actually explains all that here. Um, yeah. Canonical value of true is negative one, but technically anything other than zero is also that. So I can do that pretty easily. Uh, so if I just add a new one here, uh, so I think I'll put it up by the by the arithmetic operation. So equal type. And then, uh, yeah, we can check if it is equal. Mm, so that'll go up here as well. Else if val equals equal. Then uh, token that category equals equal type. Uh, it could just be EQ type, but it doesn't matter that much. Uh, whoops. Okay, so then right after this, we'll do case equal type. Uh, so we need to pop them both off the stack. Uh, stack dot pop, and then stack dot pop, and then stack dot push. So I don't know the order that it does it, but I think it is like that. Uh, so mm, actually, I don't think it matters because we're doing equal, not uh, comparison. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. I will do that so it is consistent with the arithmetic operations. Uh, yeah. So I think something like that should work. Uh, whoops, that's not what I want. So go run min go. Uh, yeah, so I do need to actually, mm, I need to convert it to an integer type, but then it's not going to be the right value. So actually, I need to, mm, I need to basically, that's a bit more complicated than, let's see, maybe I can do, yeah, okay, so I kind of have to do this. So stack, let's actually, so mm, val, value is, uh, let's see, A equals B. Ah, uh, so then it's going to be a Boolean. So then we need to check value. Then, whoops. Yeah, that's not right. Uh, if value, then we want to push negative 1. Else, we want to push 0. So that's kind of how we have to do that. Uh, so if I run that now, uh, we get negative 1. So let me actually print a new line as well. Because uh, that means they are equal. And then if I change it, they are not equal, then we get 0. All right, perfect. So that is cool. Um, and now then we have greater than and less than. So I can do that. Mm, so what order does it compare? To? So uh, let's see. So that's essentially like writing three like that, uh, I believe. Yes. All right. So that is the way that it's done. Let me just, all right. Um, okay. So something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Leave that. So we need to check if it is. Uh, let's see. So what way is this? So this is like less than. Less than type. Uh, less type. And then greater type. There we go. Uh, okay. So we can check. Mm, yeah. Check here. So else if val equals c like that and then also the grid okay so token dot category equals less type and then we have greater type equals greater type okay mm okay i think that'll work then we can just handle it down here uh right in right here yeah so we're doing a similar thing here so I can yank that, and this will be less. 
and I shall do it twice uh, because of that. The Nitty is great. Okay, so. <coughs> Uh, so greater a greater than b is that no, we need to do it the other way there we go like that i believe um let's see so i will just test it and make sure that it works so yeah 11 so that would be true so that should turn out true uh and i spelled it wrong greater than, there we go all right so that is zero so i think i did it the wrong way uh because like that. It should be true. All right, yeah. So I need to actually just uh, let's see. Do I need to reverse this? Um, so that is the top of the stack is great. Yeah. Okay. So this needs to go the other way. Um. Yes, indeed. Okay. So like that, negative one. And then if we switch it around, then that is actually ten is greater than eleven, which is not true. Uh. Yeah. All right. So that is good. And then. Uh, then we have boolean operators. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So let me just try uh three or four or five. Uh equals. And then one two equals. Actually one one equal. One do and we get zero. Okay. So yeah, it basically takes the top two elements in the stack, and then if they're both true. Uh yeah. Both true, it'll be one. All right, I think I can do that. So, let's see, I can just push one and zero, and then do and, and then, yeah, just print it out. So, let's add all the types for all of them, uh, but I will handle them one at a time. So, yeah, that can go actually right here. Uh, and, or, as well as, see, so this is invert. Uh, yeah, so we'll do and first. Um, okay. And type. Uh, so that is actually the last of this. Else if equals and, then token by category equals and type. All right. And then I will add that to here. So I will put it uh, right here. Uh, case and type. So we need to, um, yeah, we need to pop both of them off the stack. Stack pop. Uh, B is stack pop as well. Um, and then <clears throat> we need to basically, uh, if they are both true. Let's see. So if A and B, then oops, uh, then stack dot push negative one. Else, uh, stack dot push zero. So something like that. So it pretty much the same as these, uh, but we don't actually check the value. So actually with this, we don't really need to separate out into value. We could just do like that. Uh, yeah, I think that be that would be better. Uh, and then, yeah, all right. Uh, A equals B. Okay, so, uh, yeah, and. So let's see if that works. So that should be, okay, operator and is not defined. Uh, so it doesn't work with, okay, so it doesn't work with ints. So, mm, let's see, how do you, uh, how do you do true and false on ints? Uh, let me see. Go true and false on ints. Uh, let's see, is there a way to treat it like that? Uh, all right, that is not right. Um, let's see. All right, uh, it doesn't. Well, let me see. Uh, so basically, that won't work. So I think we just do the opposite way. If a equals zero and b equals zero, uh, then that should work. So if they're both zero, then we want to push zero. Otherwise, we want to push negative one. Okay, so if I do that, uh, ooh, that doesn't. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah, so that doesn't work. Um, yeah, because any value other than zero would be true. So let's just do not equal zero. There we go. And now if I run it, all right, perfect, zero. Then if I change it to be one or one, then it is one. Or one and five, then that should be zero. Uh, but five and five is that. 
All right, so now, there we go. That is how I wanted it to be. So we can do something like uh, 5, 5 equal. And then we can do, uh, let's see, 4, uh, 3. So 4 is less than 3. Uh, 4 is greater than 3, actually. And then we can do, um, let's see, we can do and print it out. And then print a new one as well. Okay, negative 1. All right, so that means true. Uh, so that is all good. All right, so now we have and, so let's do or, uh, or type. So a is stack dot pop, b is stack dot pop, and then we'll do if a not equal zero or b is not equal zero, then we'll do stack dot push, whoops, stack dot push negative one. Uh, whoops, whoops, else, stack dot push zero. Okay, so yeah, pretty much the same, but I do actually need to handle it up here. So, and, da, da, so, and, and then else if val equals or, and also we have inverted, or invert, uh, else if val equals invert, uh, which is equivalent to not. So, uh, token that category equals or type, and then invert type. Invert type. Okay. Hello there, X Spunk. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, so invert type or type. Um, let's see, or type. Uh yeah, so that should work now. So if we do or, it should negative one. Okay. And uh, then we change this to be false, it should still be negative one. And then if we change this uh to be false, I find it's trying to understand what's going on. Oh, uh, well, I can explain. All right, zero, perfect. Basically, um, I'm building an interpreter for fourth, um, which is a programming language. Uh, yeah, it's a stack-based programming language. So essentially, uh, you type in, you type a number, right? And then it pushes it onto the top of the stack. Then you type another number and it pushes it onto the top of the stack. So you can see here, this is the top, uh, and then this is the value right under it. Um, and then you can perform operations based on the stack. So you can add, if you type a plus, it will take the top two elements of the stack, add them together, uh, and then we get 15. Uh, so 15 is now on the top of the stack. And then if you want, you can print it out by doing a dot. So I'm basically building an interpreter for that, and there's a few other things that go into it. Uh, and basically, that's what I have here. So this pushes 5 onto the stack, and then 5 as well. And then it compares if the first value is greater than the second value. Uh, that's what this means. And then this pushes 4 onto the stack. This pushes three on the stack. This compares um, if this value is greater than this value. And then or just performs or on it. Uh, like in C, you would do true or false, uh, something like that. That is essentially what that means. Uh, and then this prints out the value, and this prints a new line. So that is sort of what's going on here. And there's a few different, few different operations and such other than that, but that is sort of the gist. OK, so now we have not type. Uh, actually, it's invert type. Nice. Uh, yeah, so how, let's see, how does this type work? Uh, let me look. So, invert. Uh, da -da. I want to go to the first mention. Okay. So, invert. Uh, let's see. All right, where is, all right, so this is invert. So, it just, yeah, okay. Well, I'm glad I understand what's going on because I just started learning coding. That's very cool. Very cool that you just started. Um, yeah, and that's good that you can understand what's going on. Yeah, so that basically takes... All right, yeah, yeah. So if I do, if I invert, then that will become negative 1, and then it becomes 0. Okay, so I put 5, though, in invert, and it becomes negative 6. Ooh. Let me actually uh, drop everything. Put 5, invert. We get negative 6. Okay. Uh, so, why does that happen? Um, 10 in invert, negative 11. So it's the negative value minus 1. Uh, okay. I suppose so. All right, so we need to pop from the top of the stack, just one value, though. And then, okay, I mean, I can understand, but I can't apply it. But it's nice to watch. I don't want to keep you busy. Well, yes, um, understanding is... It's quite important, but being able to apply it, that as well. I'm pretty sure if you sat down and tried to understand, like 
you can understand on a high level, but trying to understand on a lower level, then you'd be able to apply it, even if you're pretty new. Because this this concept I'm doing here is not very complicated. The way I am implementing it, it is quite easy actually. Um, yes. Okay, so yeah, we need to push the opposite. Uh, let's see, push negative a minus one. Uh, that's basically what we're doing. All right, so let's try that. Uh, let me make this. Let's push zero and then invert and print that out as well as a new one. Uh, negative one, okay. And then if I push five, it should become negative six. Uh, yeah, so I guess that is how you go about doing that. Um, okay, uh, yeah, that works for me. Okay, because that's how it works in this interpreter here. So, all right, then we have if. Mm. So, um, da -da. so if, what will that do? Uh, can only be used inside definitions. Okay. So, all right. So that's not, C is far simpler. Simpler than Go, you mean? C is better at understanding what PC does. Well, yeah, probably better than Go because you actually have to manage the memory. Um, yes, uh, I would agree with that. C++, then C++. Oh, sorry, I didn't read that chat above. Did I make the wrong choice with starting the course with C plus, not C? Yeah, I think it is probably better to start with C. Um, yeah, probably is better. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't read that message, and then I didn't understand what you guys were talking about. Uh, yeah, C, yes. Yeah, C plus plus does have a lot of, a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily need. Oh, uh, like, I saw this thing, which is like, um, if you need something in C, you have to implement it yourself. If you need something in C++, then you import a library, essentially. Why do you name everything type? Uh, well, because it's basically, we're creating uh, tokens. Uh, creating a token here. Uh, like in lexical analysis, essentially, is what it is. Um, yeah, we are lexing, lexing it, and then this is just the type of whatever the token is. Uh, you could just could just call it like, I guess we could just call it like that. Um, but I feel like it's easier calling it type. Uh, but yeah, doesn't really matter. That's just kind of um, from other lexing stuff that I've done. I've done that because it makes it less conflicting with other things. But here, it's not necessarily necessary. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that is why. Okay. So I didn't implement um definitions yet, so we can't really use that. So is there something else? Uh. Ta -ta. It's like enums, yeah, go, yeah, go, uh, the way that enums work, yeah, it is a little weird. Um, you just do equals iota, and then that's, yeah, it starts it at zero. So then this essentially is the same as push type equals zero, and then all these are the values after it. Uh, it's not necessarily proper enums, it is kind of weird. Um, yeah. So yeah, this would be one, two, then three. Um, it does look weird though. And it's not actually defined, so you don't do like um, enum like that. Um, it's just a constant value like that. So that is interesting as well. Uh, so in here, in the actual token structure, uh, I need to, I just define it as an int because there's not actually a type for the enums. Whereas in something like C, you know, I do type and def enum whatever there, and then I would do whatever it has the type for it. Um, yeah. Yes, but that is what it is, enums. Uh, okay, so I should probably clean this up a bit and then maybe try to implement like definitions like that, uh, like we had up here. So I think I can move some of this stuff out into separate functions. Uh, so like this could be lex function. Uh, so basically, fun uh, yeah, so we can do lex file, I suppose, and then that will handle basically the scanning of the file, essentially. Uh, so this will just take a file name. Uh, okay, and then... Uh, we can just basically do this in here. So if I just like that, uh, whoops, and then put it right here, then we can do this and we can make this file name rather than that. Okay, and then everything else I think can stay pretty much the same. Uh, but this is going to actually return, what's the use case for stack base line? Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not like, not really sure exactly how to answer that. Um, 
I like it for mostly for um uh like testing things like learning a language or whatever because it's pretty easy to actually uh to lex and parse and such um at least the way that is with the reverse polish notation and that why does fourth exist uh i don't know i have no idea i don't know why it exists uh but if you follow Sodin, uh let's see port uh he actually made port let's see uh right here yeah it's like fourth but in python uh which is actually not here okay in the github all right this is what it is and it's it's a lot easier than assembly. Two years older than C, it's a lot easier than assembly. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is basically like assembly, but there's no registers. Um, yeah, sort of. Yeah, but th there's Porth as well, which is originally based on uh, Fourth, but it's really become its own kind of thing. But it is a stack-based language as well. Um, yeah, but I don't know necessarily like the point of it. It really was the point of any language then, you know. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, but this is going to return list of tokens like that. So we can just return tokens at the end. Used a lot for microcontrollers. It actually, I didn't know that it was actually used much. Um, outside of just like learning stuff. Uh, that is cool. I still want to look that up. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Flash for it. Uh, okay. Yeah, for embedded. I did not know that this was a thing. Or a common thing, at least. Uh, that is pretty cool. Okay. Um, yes. Where was I at? All right. So this, now, instead of doing all that, we can just do uh whoops uh we can do let's file uh test dot and that should produce the same output undefined tokens uh okay so where is that at 146 oh yeah we need to actually do uh to tokens is that there we go okay perfect so now it is working as expected uh and now that is abstracted away uh even though we probably wouldn't need to lex the file more than once but all right then it cleans up the main function at least so now i want to actually take the argument and use that for that so let's do uh let's see arg let's see lane let me see if i can remember how to do this uh let's see i'm creating a proper lane for the last three months it's hard to keep being productive for so long i know what you mean uh, especially once the code base gets pretty big and then harder to work with. Um, is your language open source though? And like you have a GitHub link or something? Because I would like to check that out. Uh, length of RV uh, is less than two. Then log.fatal error please provide uh, please provide a file. And then yeah, actually uh, maybe I'll just do usage is whoops uh okay so mm, let me do s print f here actually s print f sprint f okay and then we can put uh percent s here uh and then file name dot port okay and then we can provide arg v zero so that is the file name and it's actually os dot rv there we go uh just like that okay <clears throat> and that should work now. so now if i run this um uh, okay so that doesn't work yeah okay so i need to actually build it for that to work go build and then that go uh ooh, okay actually that is not the issue so undefined is os.rv so how do you do that again uh bah, bah. let's see man run args in what i don't remember Similar to Jai. Hmm. Oh, it's just args. Okay. Args. Args. Okay. Okay. Usage is that. All right. Will Jai ever be released? That is a good question. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, then mm, we can actually do file name. 
file name is hmm, os.args1. Uh, okay, and then file name here. So if I run this without any argument, then it says that, which is kind of weird, uh, but if you build it, it looks better. And then run it like that, then yeah. Okay, so if I do that, uh, go run in that go on test.org, and it should work. All right, perfect. So now we can provide command line arguments. Very simply, but it does work. So uh, now this could probably be moved into just sort of like interpret um, interpret tokens, I suppose. Uh, interpret tokens. And this will take uh, the tokens, uh, the list of tokens. Uh, and let's see. So I don't think it's going to return anything. Uh, yeah. So I think I can just copy all this and put it into there. Mm, there we go. Okay, and actually this shouldn't be in there. That we will call from here. And then we can call interpret tokens, tokens, just like that. And then this should work now. Okay, so if I run this, undefined tokens. Mm, okay, is that right here? Yes, uh, so it doesn't, because it is token, not tokens. All right, and now, all right, so now it is, uh, okay, that's a bit better. Uh, is there something else that could be done as well? Um, bum, bum. I should probably add, like, actual debug information, like, when we have line problems, but, or problems, uh, syntax error, something like that. But I'm not going to do that right now. So, is there something else that I could do? Uh, da -da. Yeah, so this could actually be a switch statement. Uh, switch val. Um, yeah, I don't like how it tries to indent it, strangely. Uh, yeah, and then we can just add all these cases. So, uh, let's see, what's the best way to copy all that? Okay. <clears throat> I think I can actually, uh, let me see, grab these ones. Uh, and then will you add floating point stack uh yeah i might do that actually i want to look at how that is done in port uh yeah and then i will look at that so let's see so I'm replace this and just get rid of uh let's see, else if now equals and then yeah just replace that with nothing um and then do whoops then do that here as well to get rid of which I can just do something like that. Uh, oops. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. And then we have these, which we don't need anymore. I uh, mean, case that. And let me just replace that with a semicolon. So replace that with that. There we go. Okay, and then I can replace, <clears throat> let's see, uh, replace that with case, whoops, with case, that. Put a space there as well. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay, so then that almost works. I need to get rid of this. Uh, okay, perfect. That is what I want. Um, I can get rid of this as well. And then, uh, let's see, can I just use an index for this as well? Uh, that might work. Uh, yeah, if we actually use the index. Hmm. So maybe we don't even need the switch case at all. We could just do, hmm. Would that work actually? Uh, so if we check is digit there. Hmm. No, that probably not. All right, I'll just do uh, token dot category equals add type, uh, and then I'll just do this for all of these. Okay, uh, this is CR type. Okay, emit type right over <coughs> swap uh, do. Well, invert. 
Oh, uh, it's probably a better way to do this, but I am not doing that. Uh, or, and, sorry, mess that up. And, okay, this is greater, uh, less, equal, uh, div, uh, let's see, multiply, print, and sub. Okay. So now we have that, and then we just need to add default, uh, which basically checks this. So checks if the token is digit, uh, just like that. And then does this if it is. Otherwise, it lies in there. Okay, so that should work fine. Uh, we need to hit here. Though. Okay, I think that should still work now. All right, uh, unexpected interpret tokens. All right, one forty one. Um, okay. Expected to close. So I forgot a close. Ooh, here I didn't add token that category equals CR type. Okay. Uh, so I still don't have a close. Close. Let's see. Where is that at? Let me indent all this. <clears throat> Let's see. Actually, I think I need... Hmm... Let me see. So this is there. And this. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I need another one of those. There we go. All right. There we go. So now it works. Uh, let's see. So in chat, I don't know why I'm creating a language. There's nothing else to create. Uh, which I wouldn't agree with that necessarily. I think there's always something else to create. Prologue. I don't create a prologue, but I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, that uses first order logic. Is it interesting? I've not ever looked at the syntax for it. Let's see. It declared it based on first order logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there like syntax example? Uh, ooh, okay. Relations. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, I don't understand what's going on. Okay. Uh, that is very weird looking. Uh, interesting. The new, the new prologue. Okay, cool stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So now this works, and it is arguably a bit better. Uh, set so depends the token. Mm -hmm. Handle error. So I think we're all good in terms of that. All right. So now, now I will. Uh, I probably am going to take a quick break. Uh, quick break maybe for like three minutes or so. Uh, and I'm also going to run an ad, just a quick ad while I'm on break because I'm gone anyway. So I'll be right back.
I am back um, with time to spare one minute. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to work on implementing the definitions now. So let me go. Let's see. Not go. Uh, ba -ba, defining words. Yes, that is what I wanted. So uh, you can define a word. Uh, yeah. So big like that. Uh, so then you can define it if it if you have a colon. Uh, and then it goes all the way until the semicolon. So foo 100 plus that. Okay, so whenever you call foo, it basically expands into that. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's an extra 10 and then foo. Uh, okay. So I suppose I could try doing that. So let me just add the lexing for the colon and semicolon. Uh, like that. So something like that. Uh, so I will need three new types for this. Uh, so, let's see. colon type, oops, colon type, semi type, I suppose, and then a word type, because that is the definition of it. So, um, yeah, I think that'll work. So let's just check. Basically, uh, we can check <clears throat> uh, case of colon, uh, case of semicolon. And then that wants to be empty the default. So then token category, whoops, it's token dot category rather, uh, equals colon type, okay. And then this is semicolon. That category equals semi type, okay. And then in here, else instead of login error, we will just set it to a word type. So token category equals word type. Okay, so if it is not any of the built-in keywords or anything, it just becomes a word. Uh, and I think that is a fine way of doing that. So now, uh, yeah, if we encounter a colon, then basically uh, perhaps there should be some sort of flag that we encounter that says, uh, yeah, like a true-false that says inward, essentially. Uh, I think we could do that. So interpret tokens. Uh, it, this could just be called, mm, let's see, how can I name this? Uh, maybe just in word, I guess. Uh, and it'll start out as false. So if we encounter, uh, let's see, I put it at the end. We encounter a colon, colon type. Then in word equals true. Uh, case semi type, and it will equal false. So temporarily, I will just print print line uh, in word for both of these. And then we should see it be true and then false. Uh, okay, true and the false. So it looks like that is working. Um, okay. And then if we encounter, let's see, I, we need basically a hash map for this. Uh, yeah, something like that. A hash map, which then can contain all the different types, uh, which can then, yeah, okay. I think that'll work. So, uh, I think we can define a hash map. Um, and it can just be, a hash map of, hmm, let's see, let me look at hash map, um, I don't remember exactly how to do it, hash map and go, map, and go. just call it map, let's see, go by example maps, uh, yeah, you can make a map, um, so the key is a string, uh, and that is what I want, because the word, actually, let me make sure, just quickly, that this word, so that is a word, and then I will do that, uh, case word type, and then print line. Uh, let's see. I said I didn't set the value to anything, so I do need to do that. So print line. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So it is yeah val dot uh val dot value is what it is called. Uh, so we do need to set that. I forgot about that. So in here, uh token dot value equals val. Ah, uh, yeah, perfect. So then that should say foo. All right, yeah, perfect. That's what I want. Uh, so we will need a map. Uh, yeah, so let's see how that was defined exactly. So basically, this is the words is. See, so that is make. I don't think do you need make. Uh, what is a different syntax for that? Because uh, I don't necessarily want to do it like that. Uh, I will, though, if I... Yeah, something like this. So just find it as a very because I can do that. Uh, so then string, and then this, the other ones will be tokens. Can it be a list of tokens? 
like that. Um, ba -ba. yeah, I think something like that should work. So let me see if it will compile. And declare to not use. Okay, yeah, let me not call it M. This will be called words. Uh, and then I can just do words um test equals uh tokens. Same thing like that. Okay, and then we have some errors. Uh, assignment to entry in nil map. All right, so you have to actually, um, you have to make it. All right, so that is the point of the make. So I can do that. Uh, yeah, so I'll just do it like this. Then. Words is make map. Uh, there you go. And then, all right, uh, yeah, so that works now. So then if I, yeah, all right, so we can set it like that. Uh, then we want to basically, uh, we encounter a word and want to set all the words after that up until, yeah, okay. Mm. So I think the way to do that, uh, how do you iterate through the range like that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, maybe we need some sort of flag as well for current word. Uh, and this will, yeah. Just very, very big. Uh, current word, and that is a boolean. Uh, no, it's not a boolean. It's a string. Uh, so then we can set current word equal to that, and then we basically need to, if we're in the word, then yeah, then we just add that to the word list essentially. Okay, so let me do that. Um, okay, so current word equals val val val. Okay, there we go. So that will set the current word to that. And then I guess in all of these, yeah, we can, before the switch statement, we can do uh, if in word, then do something here, else we just do this. So we can get rid of this, else do that. Um, so then you won't ever actually encounter the semicolon in here because that will be handled in the other one. I think, I think that should be fine. So do that and then, um, Something like that okay so uh if we're in the word then we basically want to append all the tokens to the to the word yeah make a word list let's see okay so we're adding a lot of new stuff here that doesn't feel necessarily the best way to do it but i'm going to do it like that for now and then i can rearrange it so basically uh word tokens uh is very word tokens is a token list like that and then just append to the list so word tokens uh so we do need to check if it's a semicolon but otherwise we want to just word tokens equals append word tokens uh let's see uh val there we go uh but if val dot category don't need those if val dot category equals um if it equals uh, semi type, they want to break out. Else, we want to do this. So, yeah, basically, we want to uh, add to the words hash map of current word um, equals word token, and then we want to say in word equals false. Okay, something like that. Let's see. All right, so we just get true. Um, so, that if we do that. Uh, okay, so this is word type if it is a definition. So basically what we want to do actually is if in word, then we want to set the current word. Otherwise, we want to actually get the value out of that hash map. So, um, all right, else, um, yeah, so we can just, I'll just do, we want to get it out of the hash map and then sort of just call this on itself, right? Something like that. Uh, yeah. So that makes me think I want to move this stack out of here. Um, and maybe these all as well. So define these outside of the function. So basically we could have this here. We could have stack, which is a pointer to a stack. Um, do we need a pointer? Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Um, and then we don't necessarily need inward, but we do need the words. Uh, which is the head map. Words is a map string of tokens. Uh, and then 
I don't think we need flame word. I think we just need those. Um, yeah, I think that should be fine. So then we can move all these out and actually call them in the main. So I can just uh, do that. And then in here, right before this, we'll call those and then we will pass them into here. So stat and words. Um, and this might break some stuff. <clears throat> but then this should be that as well. Okay. Can I index words? Okay. So yeah. Right. Uh, boom. Okay, so I think I. Mm, do I need to do something like that? Uh, yeah, so that doesn't work now. Mm, so maybe it doesn't like the pointer. Let's see, is there? Is that not how you dereference? Uh, ooh, I don't think I pass it actually properly though, because this needs to be. Okay. Um, because <clears throat> I don't know that I want to pass it. Mm, I want to pass it by reference, right? Uh, can I index that? So let me do that. And then, can I index words? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think. All right, so let me just do that. Um, then it works. Uh, let me make sure that stuff works. Stuff. So let me push 10, 10 equal, and then print. Yo, yo, GMOS XX, how are you doing? Okay, uh, no, you're fine. All right, so that is good. Yeah, all right, so that is all working. Whoops. Uh, so now let me go back to this. So, boom. So then we'll print true. Do you stop the team thing? No, I'm still working on that. Uh, I'm just working on something else right now, like taking a break from that sort of. Um, Cause I am currently, um, well, I'm getting close to where I'm going to actually start implementing the higher level language on top of it, rather than the assembly that I've been building. Um, yeah, and so I need to prepare for that a little bit more. So I'm sort of taking a break while I research some stuff, uh, but it is not, not stopped. Okay, so I can get rid of printing this, and then else, cool, cool, okay, else, and then that, okay, so this, I also want to get the value out of the hash map, uh, so I will basically serp it open, uh, with, with the value in the hash map, is what I want to do, so, yeah, word tokens, mm, no, words, yeah. Hmm. Words current word. Yeah, words of this word. Words of value, value, value. And then have you tried Zig? Uh I have not ever actually used Zig at all. Uh and I don't know if it's good or not. Like I've heard mixed opinions on it. Uh yeah. And then also the stack and the mm, what is the last one that we need to pass? Uh the words, yeah. Okay. I uh, like that. There we go. Okay. So now, if I do 10, 10 plus, then it should not interpret them. Okay. On uh, print as well. Zig, Nim, and Go look nice, but not different enough for me to switch. Put more than 10k lines of one in one project in Zig, and I would say it's cool. Uh, what was the project? Like, is Zig even ready to use, you know? Like, it's pretty new. Uh, is it something that could actually be used? Like, I mean, like, would a company adopt it? Compiler, nice. Yellow. Okay, so it doesn't do anything, but then if I call it, it should do all that. Okay, it didn't work. So, mm. so let me just iterate through them here. Mm, four. Zig is built with itself. Yeah. Well, it's self-hosted, right? Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's ready for ready for prime time, if you will. Um, yeah, because like, you know, well, depending on the complexity of the language, it's not necessarily too difficult to become self-hosted like that. Um, but I guess Zig is probably rather complex, so maybe it's a bit 
Maybe it's kind of difficult. Uh, yeah. This is range of of uh, word val dot value, and then I want to just print all the tokens that we have in here. Okay, so yeah, just sort of print the print the type of them at least. So this should be the type. Uh, yeah. So this can actually be called. This is just the token. So then I will just print one token dot category, and I will comment this out. Uh, okay, and that didn't work. So do we not get here at all? So, uh huh. Zig now can build and link with itself. They have their own linker and assembler. Oh, okay, that's cool. I didn't know there was um linker and assembler as well. So mm, in Word, let me do okay, line in Word. And then not inward and see what we get. All right, so we get not inward. Uh, we never get inward though. Ooh, because we actually define it not in here. Hmm. Oh yeah, so we never set the current word. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Inward. And then the current word. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need to check that in here. I didn't even consider that. So yeah, only an x86 backend though. Oh, okay. Like, but for all platforms, like Linux and Windows and such, or uh, just one of them, or what? Exactly. Else if, mm, now that category equals a uh, word type, then we need to set current word. Current word equals val dot val. So that is what I need to do. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now if I call this, uh, ooh, okay. So that is something. Uh, not okay. Yeah, yeah. If I get rid of this and this, uh, and then reinterpret the tokens here. Okay, so it's going to print some stuff, and then we get twenty. Okay, so I think it did work. Uh, so if I add a CR here, then there we go. So we get twenty with a new line. And if I call it again, so I should be able to call it more than once. Twenty twenty. Okay, so I think that is words working now. Uh, yeah. I think that's working actually. Uh, so that is pretty cool. So, mm, okay. So I think now if I go back to here. Uh, so that is how they are defined. So let me make the same thing and make sure it works the same. So foo ten ten plus dot cr that and call foo twenty foo twenty foo twenty. Okay. And now what if I do mm, get rid of the that? So this just adds ten and ten. So, and puts it on the stack. So if I do it twice, foo, foo, and then print them both out, then we should have 20 and 20. 20 and 20. All right, perfect. That is perfect. So it looks like it's working pretty good. Uh, maybe, I don't know that that's, yeah, that's not what I want. Uh, okay. I think Windows is still work in progress, but I'm not sure about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it's not production ready, like go or rest. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. So, I mean, the target audience for it is, like, C users who want... It's kind of like what C++ was originally supposed to be, right? Like, if I understand correctly. I may not. Um, But, yeah, it's sort of, like, for C users or people who like C um, but don't want to use C, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, CR, like that. There we go. Uh, okay, 2020. So I think we have words now. So uh, I think we can do um, all the other stuff now. So let's go to, mm, so generating output, we could do that as well. Uh, whoops, uh, hand, the, um, the one with the strings. So I don't know that I want to do strings yet. Uh, I think I'd rather do the conditionals right now. So we have those, the conditions, uh, but then if statement, so, uh, ooh, there is mod. Okay. Yeah, I need to do that, actually. So, if I do... Uh, yeah, okay. So, let me actually implement mod quickly. And then I will do that. Because uh, I did not realize that. So, let me just get rid of all this. So, 10, 3, mod. Okay. And then print it out. And print a new mod. So, that is what I need to do. So, let me add here. 
This can go right after div mod type. Uh, yeah, so then after div in here, right here, I will add case of mod. There we go. Open dot category equals mod type. Uh, okay. <clears throat> then we can just interpret it here right after div. Uh, so it's rather similar. Mod type. Uh, and then just mod a. There we go. Run that, and we get one. All right, so that is what I expected. So that is perfect. Uh, yes, so we have that now. Um, so this is buzz. So what does the question mark mean? Oh, that is just part of the label. Okay, so buzz 5 mod 0 equals. So if, they, if they're equal, then output's buzz. So I don't want to implement the string output yet. So I'm going to do that differently. So I think, um, let's see, maybe I won't use this mod one. Uh, so it's only allowed in definitions, which is interesting. So let's just do uh, foo, and then we'll push zero, or we'll push one and then two, then equal, and if they are, uh, if that, okay, so this is just if is true, then, all right, if is true, it will do whatever is in here. Uh, so that is what it looks like to me. So let me try that actually. So let me just define the same thing. One, two. Uh, let's see. Let's do one, one. So it is true. Um. Okay. Holy moly. Okay. Uh, yeah. Equals. So if they're equal, then we just print. Uh, then we'll do that. Yeah. Something like that. So Paul Fu. Uh, and they are equal. Okay. But now if I go back and change it to be like that, and then call foo, and they are not equal. Okay. And how much, can we just put whatever we want in here? So if we do 10, and then print. And I need to make them equal again. Uh, okay, yeah, so you can have a full, full amount of things in here. Okay, so this will basically work in a similar way to the labels. Uh, well, maybe not actually. So we'll just do, if it's on top, then we will if it's not, if a value on top is not true, then we will skip all the way to then. Otherwise, otherwise, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we will just go through. Okay, so I think we can do that. So let me just do dot in here. Then we do that. Okay, and then we can call through. So right now, uh, this won't work because we have un unknown things. So, so instead of a word type, uh, we will have if type, and then then type. There we go. Okay, so just like that. Uh, and then if we encounter mm, base base of if, then token not category equals if type. Base of then uh, token not category equals then type. All right, perfect. So then 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 then. So that will only be handled in here. So if we encounter it outside of that, then I guess we could throw an error. So hey, let me do uh equal if. Uh yeah, so that doesn't work. Did you try making language before, or this interpreter is first thing in that area? Uh no, I made um well so I made one compiled language. Uh it was just very basic. It was my first time ever doing any of that. Uh, I didn't get too far. Like the most it could do was compile fizzbuzz or whatever. Um so I've done that. That was like about two months ago, I think. Um, and then uh, I'm working on a virtual machine uh, with its own assembly and bytecode and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, those are the two things that I've worked on before. Um, yeah. This is really mostly just to learn to go. I'm not doing necessarily all of the uh, program language things correctly, quote unquote, because um, I'm not really parsing it at all. Um, Stuff like that. Wondering how to know when to try self-hosting and is it even worth it? Um, well, I mean, that depends. Like, if you're building it with, so you said Zig, I believe, is what you said before. Um, yeah. Well, really, the reason you would want it to be self-hosted is either so there's no dependency on anything else. No, you use C++. Oh, okay. 
Uh, oh yeah, that was someone else who said Z. Okay, my bad. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, so the reason you would do that is either uh, you want to remove the dependency of C++ in your case, or because you could make it better. Like, so if you were using Python or something, and it was a compiled language, it'd be quite helpful to make it self-hosted because it could end up being a lot faster than a lot faster than Python would be. Um, but if you're using C or C++, it's already, like, if it's self-hosted, it probably becomes slower. So, um, it really depends. Really depends. Also, I think it's good just for a learning experience as well. Just of self-hosting something. But yeah, it all depends. Uh, yeah, so we're only going to handle that in here. Comment editor equals if type. Uh, then we'll do if stuff. So now I'll check here. Uh, here I can add case. Uh, let's see. Actually, that is a little bit weird. Stop here. Uh, is that right? Yeah. If I. I think I want it like that. The issue isn't with speed. It's mostly the project structure and the known header files. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to have to deal with deal with that stuff. Is that what you mean? With the stuff that C++ comes with. Uh, yeah. For the test, I do. Uh, oh, your lane is better and simpler for the test, I do. Yeah, well, it might be useful in that case. To simplify the project structure and make it more, I suppose, maintainable in the future and expandable. Fatal. So this is basically it shouldn't ever get there. And in case... Uh, any type or then type, then type as well. Do just the same thing. Air then. Let's see the air here. Um, yeah, I can add better air handling later. Uh, so we can add that. So we shouldn't encounter it in here. It should only be in a function or in a word rather. Uh, okay. I'll maintain two versions probably. It's good for test for the compiler to implement itself. Yeah. That is cool. Do you have a link to your project? Because I would like to look at that. And good for making core library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I'll need file IO, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Okay, so if type, then okay, so it should be add another flag for in in if. But that is really only in in here. Uh so yeah. <clears throat> it's too bad to look at yet. Zero docs. Well I mean that's okay, like um, I mean, I still look at it, but if you don't feel comfortable sharing, then obviously it's fine. Uh, so yeah, if we encounter this, then in if equals true. Zazaka 6, so yeah, person I was talking to followed. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, also, did I say that right? Zaka Zaka, not Zazaka. Zaka Zaka, is that correct pronunciation? Uh, I'm very bad at pronouncing names. It is something that I do a lot. Is then, right? then we are not no longer in it. I'll show you in 60 days if you still will stream. Well, I plan on still streaming in 60 days, so uh, okay. Hope I'll make it better. Well, good luck with that. Uh, okay, true and false, true and false. So now uh, we basically want to execute what is in here based on the condition. So if yeah, okay, I think we can do that. So, mm, yeah, basically, we want to pop off the stack. So, I think we can do that in here still. So, if we just do, uh, but we only want to, ooh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't think that is necessarily right. So, mm, trying to think how I would go about doing this. Hmm. So I want to make it in there, but when we do that, we just call it through here again. So, okay, actually, yeah, yeah, I think what I can do is if the top of the stack, mm, so it's hard to tell in here because we don't actually, so we need to kind of simulate it in here as well. So when we do this, we want to simulate what's going on so we can see the top of the stack. Also depend on Premake 5 and Visual Studio and no CMake is available. Oh yes, C++ project tooling is annoying. Ah uh, yes, that is quite true. Um, yeah. I and mean, I haven't used too much C++, but 
from what I have seen, it is not not great, especially on Windows, because uh, if you're using Visual Studio, I, I'm assuming you're on Windows. Uh, yeah, not a big fan of that. I like C, build.sh, just GCC, uh, may not see whatever, like that. Bam, super easy. Ah, uh, yeah. Like with minimal dependencies. Um, yeah. Okay. So if we're in the word, then we don't want, if it is false, we don't want to append. So dang, it's going to be hard to tell though. So something I could do. Hmm. Yeah, this makes it rather difficult. So let me just do a is stack dot pop. Uh, so we get that. And then if a, then if a is true, then we continue. Continue. Else we do. Let's see. Actually, so then we do. Uh, hmm. Maybe we don't need an in it. Uh, maybe instead of that, we need, um, basically, uh, in, in, in if is true. Depends just on C++ 17 and links only LLVM. Okay, so you're using LLVM. Could write script to call Clang and compile it by hand without any CMake. Okay, yeah. Alright, depends only on C++. Uh, yeah. So LLVM. I've never used that before. So I've only implemented my own uh, backends, uh, which I haven't done much of, but yeah. Okay, if it's A, then continue. Otherwise, we do in it is true, uh, which is kind of a confusing name, equals true. Uh, and then it is true equals false. Okay, so basically, what I want to do is check if we are in, if we're not, let's see, uh, actually is false rather is false equals true uh yeah and then here we don't actually need to set anything but if we are in yeah hang on so in if is false equals equals false like that uh, and then here we just check if uh in if is false uh which i should probably change that name if it is false else do this uh yeah so basically uh if i can walk through this uh let me just grab this put it in here and then let's see okay so if the if statement was false then uh yeah this is a little confusing if it's false then we set that equal to true and then we just skip through um and we just need to basically check um if now that category equals then type then in if is false equals false. All right? So then we don't append anything. Otherwise, we do append stuff. So then we can sort of skip over it. Um, yeah. But this doesn't do a very important thing, which is actually simulate the stack. Because, yeah. Hmm. Because when we do stack.pop, it's not going to work exactly how we want it to. So, uh, yeah. So we can run it now, but it's not going to work. Uh, so we do have in if is false. This is true is false. Okay. That is 180. If a, ooh, okay. A is not equal to zero. There we go. Next, I need to get that back. So, uh, in if is false. Yeah, actually, I can switch this one. So if it is zero, then in if is false equals true. Uh, yeah, All right, something like that. What's your strategy? Skip to the then token. Uh, yeah, basically. So if it's false, uh, just go until we encounter then type. Um, otherwise, we just keep appending it. Um, that is basically it. The only problem that I have is that we don't know what is on the stack. So right now I'm doing this. But we need to basically make a simulated stack, and then as we append it, we also run the run the things so that we can actually see what's on top since it's only available in words like this um that's sort of what we have to do uh yeah so i'm not sure exactly how i'm gonna go about doing that okay stack underflow uh so i think that is from this popping actually yeah so if i do that then 
All right, then it would. So that is the issue. So it doesn't want us to pop uh, because it doesn't. Yeah. So we basically need a simulated stack. Are you doing this when compiling the word or executing the word? Mm, this is when, uh, yeah, compiling the word essentially. Uh, basically, we're generating it. Um, and then when we execute it, we just call it again on itself, uh, basically recursively. So we would go down here uh, and then, yeah, we just call the same function again, except not in a word. Uh, so we don't encounter if here. So basically what I'm thinking is then we don't ever have if in here. So we don't have to worry about conflict conflicts with that. Um, yeah. So, cause right now, if we encounter it, we just do this. If we are not in, in the word definition, essentially. Um, yeah. So I just need to simulate the stack, I suppose. Um, which would be a bit complicated. Uh, but basically, um, okay. So let's see. Um, yeah. So we need to, I'm going to have to go pretty soon. So I just want to try to finish this up before then. Uh, yeah, we need to, we need to do all this stuff, but with each word, um, maybe I need to rethink something. What's that outer if condition? Uh, that is if, all right, so we have, if we're in the word, uh, which yeah, if it's the definition of a word, essentially, uh, otherwise we just, we interpret all this. Uh, so if we're in the word, then we have is, if in, if is false. So that's if it's false then we just check if it is a then, and then we set it, we unset it to false. Otherwise, uh, we have, yeah, this is a lot of nested stuff. Um, I'm just trying to get it to work, and then I can clean it up later. Then if uh, the category is a semi-type, then we end the word, and we set the value in the hash map of the word, and then we set that equal to false. So we exit out of this, essentially. Uh, otherwise, if it is a word type, then we set the current word. Otherwise, if it's an if type, then we get the top of the stack, which isn't doing that yet. It's just setting it to zero. Uh, and then... If it is in false equals true, uh, yes, we set that equal to true if this is false. Uh, otherwise, we just go here. And actually, I don't know that I need this because uh, we don't actually encounter this in here. So I can get rid of that. Don't need that one. Uh, and then else, we just append all the tokens to the list of word tokens, uh, which then is what gets executed on. Pending to word tokens creates the compiled word definition. Ah, uh, yeah, that's basically what it is. So we have the word tokens, and that is the list of tokens that we call, that we store in the hash map, and then we call those whenever we, uh, whenever we encounter the word. Yeah, that is basically how it works. So if I get rid of it, I will work without that. So this will just print uh, whether or not they are equal. Uh, whether or not they are equal, and we can go with this, poo -poo, uh, like that, and we just call it several times. Uh, zero zero zero. That is how it works. Hey, what are we building? Um, today, there you go. And that is what I am building today. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it's a fourth interpreter in Go. Okay. So, yeah, that is how it works. Uh, let me actually go back to our word. So, if then. All right. So, let me actually try setting this just equal to one. And then it should still append it all. Okay. And then. Uh, bah, bah. All right. Then, if I call this. I would handle the if when you execute the word. Let me see. So, yeah. Well, so the problem with that <clears throat> is that, um, what language is it? This is Go. Go lang. Go lang. Ah, uh, yeah. So the problem with that is <clears throat> uh, down here. So if the if can only be in a word definition, um, and the way I'm handling word definitions it just by calling it recursively on what is in stored in the word. Um, so then I would need basically a way to check. Uh, I guess I could try to do that. A way to check if um, if the word, uh, if we're currently executing a word, then I would want to do that. Otherwise, we need to throw an error. So I guess, I suppose I could try to do that. Yeah, maybe I could add an extra flag, which is just... Um, Basically, yeah, maybe. Um, true. So we'll pass true in here. Uh, and then just have this. I would also allow it. Well, I am just trying to. I'm not trying to make my own language. I am just trying to implement fourth. And in fourth, that is not allowed. So that's the only reason I'm doing that. Otherwise, I would allow it outside. Uh, but since I'm trying to just try, 
trying to build the fourth standards um or at least what it what it says it is on this website uh that is what that's the only reason i'm not doing it um yeah so i can just add another thing here this can be a boolean uh which is just his word okay and so that is false by default uh false but when we call it it is true so i think if we do that then we can check if we are in if type so if let's see if in word else we need a false um okay something like that okay uh so that could work and then i think we need this whoops i need think that we need the same thing down here okay yeah so then maybe i'll get rid of the definitions in here of this so let me just get rid of all of this right now unindent this and i think i need to get rid of that uh and then pen that so i can get rid of this as well okay so that i think all should work now uh, so that is how it was before and then yeah so then i'll try to do it in here instead so basically yeah we can pop off the stack uh let's see a is stack dot pop if a is not equal to zero then it is true so then we want to then we want to continue so for now let's continue else uh we do not want to continue so we want to skip until we get to then type so mm, what's the best way to do that so i don't know if i can actually it can i iterate the index here so if i have this be index uh will that change it so if i do index um let's see, then just check yeah so i actually never encountered that basically we just do wall um let's see wall um wall val is not equal now that category is not equal then type uh actually there is no wall so yeah basically yeah so we need to use four loops instead for uh let's see i is zero that then i actually can do index by plus it's what i want to do here so yeah we can just use index for this um one that we defined up there uh and then let's see actually um it's gonna be indented okay <clears throat> so if we do that then we'll iterate the index until um until it is not that so just like uh i mean i can take that just pass uh i don't know how to do that exactly but let's see uh okay variable type of type int is not used uh well i'm trying to use it here so is it not available here hmm uh oh okay no. so i say it's not used here but i tried to iterate it there so okay uh let's see how can i just not have that okay so it doesn't like that uh so does this not work can you not iterate the index when you are using a range like that hmm That is just what I want to do. Um, <clears throat> doesn't like that. Okay. Um, let's see. What if I use i uh, and do i plus plus here, and then index plus equals i. Error if. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So we encountered this while not in word. Okay. So that is okay. Hmm. So, why is that? This is actually an error again. Uh, okay, so I can get rid of this entirely, I think, because we do skip past that. Um, I'm not sure that it is iterating it properly. Okay, uh, error if. So that is in here where we are calling it. So we are somehow getting to this while not inward uh because we're sitting into true there mm. <clears throat> okay so let's see where we're at mm. so do we actually get in here let me see let's 
Uh, maybe I don't want to use continue here. Uh, yeah. If i is not equal to zero, then yeah, we just, well, I guess maybe continue is right. Uh, but let's see, do we make it in here? In, uh, okay, so we don't actually get there. So is inward, is that the right name actually? Uh, is word, that's what I want to use. So I'm using the wrong, thing. so if is word, there we go. And then, all right, yeah, and so now it just loops forever. So I don't think we can iterate the index like this. Actually, maybe index equals let's play. Mm, yeah, okay, so let me print here. So we are getting, I think it's stuck in here. Uh, let's see, I thought, print. Uh, val dot category. So does it not iterate here? Yeah, so it just gets stuck on the same one. So how can you iterate? How can you iterate index? Because mm, I basically want to just skip. Uh, go range iterate index. Uh, because we're using the value from it. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, to pervert, preserve. Let's see. Okay. Mm. Let's see. But then the index does increase, right? By right, like index. Uh, yeah. So it just goes up infinitely. Um, but it doesn't actually change the value. No, there is no wall wall loops in um. There's no wall loops in Go. Uh, so you have to use four. Oops, not in it properly. Um, but that really wouldn't solve it anyway, because the issue is that uh, we're using range up here, uh, range, and so we get an index and a value. And so basically, yeah, the index is the current index, so the i or whatever. And then the value is like if you did um, stir i like that. Um, <clears throat> and then we're using the value, but I don't know how to iterate the value. Uh, so that is really what the issue is. So it wouldn't really matter even if there was while loops. Uh, it would be a bit nicer than this because that's basically just what I want to do here. But uh, let's see. Is there... Let's see. I basically just want to iterate the value. Fix the outer range. Mm. How do you mean? Uh, uh... Make it not be a range. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Hmm. Then I do have to go through and change everything, but I don't, I could even still use range. Um, but the issue, like, I just have to go through and change everything here. <clears throat> like, do tokens index like that. Um, I guess I could do create a place for that. Uh, yeah, so maybe just not use val and only use, I'll call this i though. Uh, and then I think I can query replace val in all of this all of this oh uh, yeah long function uh whoops okay we replace bell with uh let's see tokens i uh and then i will do that <coughs> whoops uh no i wanted to go back uh yes yes uh tokens dot nope so i don't want that one so i want to skip that one uh bell so that, wait, what is the val coming from? Mm, yeah, so no, I don't want, I want to replace that. Uh, I want to replace that. Do not want to replace that one. Mm, yeah, that is right. Okay. I uh, don't want to do that. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Uh, I would do val equals tokens. I uh, That's actually a much better idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Okay, so yeah, val is uh val is tokens up. I know change this to not be i anymore, and I need to fix that. And then actually, I am using index down here, so I need to change it to i. Uh, i plus plus. And this can actually be yeah. So we can just use i here rather than rather than doing all that. So uh, i is not used. Undefined label index. So, oh yeah, here is where I'm right now. Um, and so it says I want to use. Um, right, maybe I can't do that. I don't know why it doesn't like the indentation. 
uh, and then index plus plus, and then I'll put I and I plus plus. Okay, less than equal. Uh, okay. Dang, it still gets stuck in a loop. So now I don't know why. Um, because it's not iterating a problem. Uh, ooh. oh yeah. So I need to actually reset val. So val val equals uh tokens i. There you go. So now. Uh, stack underflow. Ooh, okay. So why is that? Okay, so <clears throat> I think uh, let's see. Can I print out token dot value like that rather than that? So inward. I print that up here. Uh, so we get a stack underflow. So it's trying to do something not right. Um, maybe I need to do. I minus minus right at the end. Uh, no, okay, so that's not the issue. So I need to figure out what the issue is. So the value is 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I think it's because the value doesn't actually exist for a lot of them. So <clears throat> uh, let's see, I can see what all these are. So oh, that is actually the i. So we have 23, 7, and 17, and 24. So this one's 0. So then let's see, 23 uh, is if. And then 17 is print. And then 24 is then. Okay. So we get to then. Uh, but then it ends. So, okay. Uh, uh, so, ooh, are we trying to print? Is that the reason? Uh, so, what is the issue here? Um, what if I do that? And then, okay, yeah, so it prints out 10. So the issue is now, ooh, okay. So it's not getting the rest of it now. <coughs> um, yeah, okay. So it's still trying to print it, um, even though we're trying to skip over it. Uh, okay. So we should be skipping over here. Because uh, they are not equal. But for some reason, it is still trying to print. Uh, so, why, why, why? Uh, let me go to print type, uh, which is actually right here. And then, uh, print line here. Uh, there we go, it's for debug purposes. So we do get here, um, and I don't know why. Uh, let me print is word. Uh, okay, so is word is true. Uh, I actually want to set is word equal to false at the end, right? Or no, that's not what we need. Uh, that is not the problem. So, hmm. So after we go through here, is there something that we need to set? Um. Yeah, I don't know why it is trying to do that. So, mm, okay, case then type. Uh, actually, this I should probably put something in here. How do you increment at the top of the main loop? Uh, let's see. Well, that is still using the range. Uh, so mm -hmm, that's not where I wanted to go. All right. Uh, that is using a range up here. So this is the index of the range, uh, and that's how we increment here. So it's just basically the same as a for loop. Essentially, what this is. And we just set this equal to that each time. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. So maybe the range actually wouldn't work. Uh, yeah, that's probably why. Can you, inf yeah, maybe that's what I should do. So I think that is probably a good idea. So for, uh, yeah, so i is 0. i is less than, uh, then of tokens. Yeah, of tokens. i plus plus. I think we do that, maybe. There we go. Okay, so now it skips over, but if we make them equal, it should, it doesn't work. Okay. But, oh yeah, because there's nothing on the stack. Because uh, if actually consumes it. But if, should that, should that consume it actually? Uh, let me see. Mm, let me do, a one one equal if dot then that. Uh, and then if we call foo, 
negative one. Alright, so if should not consume. So we need it to not pop, but rather peak. Uh, it's definitely peak. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, let me get rid of that print statement, actually. Uh, where is that at? That is somewhere up here. Um, oh, it's in the print. I thought if pop. Uh, yeah, I thought so, too. Uh, that's why I did that, actually. Um, yeah, that's kind of weird that it says. Not gonna lie, but it is fine. Uh, it is what it is. That is actually right here. In the middle thing. So, I run that now. Uh, so we should be able to put more stuff in here. So we can make if push tag, and then print. Mm, and then if I run that, then it print that tag. And then we actually do a new line as well. And then, there we go. Okay, so... I think we have is statements now. So we can change this to not be equal. And then it will not print. Okay, and we still print all that debug stuff. So let me get rid of that. Uh, okay, now if I run that, it doesn't print anything. But if we make it equal again, it will print 10. All right, perfect. So now we have if statements, words. Uh, so yeah, we already have actually a whole lot of this. Uh, we don't have any of the loops or if else. Um, so that will actually take some stuff. But I'm going to push this and then I'm going to have to be done for the day. So yeah, uh, so that's gonna be it. So let me actually uh, add git ignore uh, for main. Um, I will continue working on this uh, probably for over a few streams and try to get it pretty much fully implemented. Uh, let me also modify the reason uh, literally just for it. So uh, maybe I don't need to modify that. Uh, yeah, I think that another time. So that's not for it. Uh, yeah, this is a good example, I suppose, for now. Um, yeah, so let me just add all that. Whoops, that's not what I'm going to do. Git, not in. Uh, let's see. So, implemented words and if blocks nested within words. Ah, uh, there we go. So, push that. Okay, and now should be up on the GitHub. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so that is going to be it for today. Um, yeah, so I will just make sure everything looks good in here. Ah, uh, there's nothing here. Test out fourth is good. Uh, okay. Yeah, so next is uh, the rest of the loops, or loops, uh, if else. Uh, yeah, if else. And then uh, variables. Ooh, okay, there's variables in there as well. Uh, variables. Um, yeah, so all this stuff I will work on next stream. Constants, uh, that is a thing. Arrays, so there is allocate, so that allocates memory. Mm, keyboard input yeah so i need to do all this stuff uh next time and then that's most of it so this uh there's also like references that you can do in here as well i think i don't know if it goes over that uh ooh, okay it actually does so what i seem to have missed that uh that stores a value at the memory code location uh yeah so all that stuff i will work on next time so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye